My name is Dr. Elizabeth Yu. I am a pulmonary critical care physician, and I currently practice at the University of California in San Francisco, um, and also at Palo Alto Medical Foundation. They're both in the Bay Area, Northern California, in the United States. It's a really common chronic disease that's characterized by persistent air, uh, respiratory symptoms. Um, and airflow limitations. So basically every time you breathe in, you need to exhale all of that. And in COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, you're not able to fully exhale everything. So imagine taking in a deep breath and then holding it and then just breathing up and down at that high, like your lungs are already full and then you're trying to breathe on top of it. That's what people with COPD have to do. They can't exhale everything. You know, understandably that can have a huge impact on their quality of life how they feel when they're breathing, and then there are a lot of other associated illnesses that can go along with it. It can be really confusing because there is actually, there are diseases where there's overlap between the two. So you can have both at the same time, but if we wanna be just as clear cut about it as possible, COPD is an irreversible airflow obstruction. So, you know, the air that you can't exhale we can't fix that process versus an asthma it's reversible so you use an inhaler you take medications and you can get the air out it doesn't stick with you all the time um, and asthma is more related to inflammation which is why it's easier to treat um, either sometimes asthma will just go away on its own like a lot of childhood asthma you outgrow as you get older or you get treatment and it gets better but copd is a little bit trickier to treat and manage Yeah, so COPD, at least in um, the United States, it affects about a little bit more than 5% of people, and it's ranked fourth um, as the cause of death in the U.S. And mortality rates like that are about the same in high-income Asian countries, and specifically in Singapore, COPD is the sixth leading cause of death. So it's not uncommon, for sure. The three cardinal symptoms of COPD are shortness of breath, a chronic cough, and then coughing up phlegm. Classically, those are the three things that you'll have. If you look at the spectrum, right, there's always a spectrum to disease. If someone has mild symptoms, they might just feel a little bit of shorter breath, maybe just like a little bit of a cough. Maybe it's just when they're, you know, really exerting themselves, like during exercise that they feel it. And then the other end of the spectrum is really severe, like in the hospital because they get so short of breath and, you know, need really intense medication, sometimes even oxygen, um, things like that. Yeah, so if you think about um, almost like a graph of like your shorter breath, shorter breath, and then all of a sudden, oh, you're even more shorter breath, you just feel so much worse, that's a flare. And it's usually um, regular symptoms that just are a lot worse than usual. You know, usually you're shorter breath when you exercise, but now you're shorter breath just sitting still, not doing anything. Um, you, like maybe you have a little bit of a cough, but now, oh, you're coughing up a ton and there's lots and lots of phlegm. Usually COPD flares are triggered by an infection of some sort, either viral or bacterial pneumonia. There's always something that triggers it. And so then when the flare happens, we treat whatever caused it, usually the infection, and then we treat um, uh, the lungs to help with the, air, with the airflow obstruction, to so help people exhale more air since they're holding on to a little bit more than usual. And we do that with a combination of steroids and antibiotics. Yeah, so COPD is linked with a lot of other health conditions, um, things that we call comorbidities. And the most common is lung cancer. There's a definite link between COPD and lung cancer. Um, there's also a link between COPD and heart disease. Um, having really stressed out lungs all the time can translate to having a stressed out heart. Um, you can also have sleep related uh, breathing disorders like sleep apnea, you can have diabetes, kidney problems, uh, bone problems, heartburn, having these types of health issues can definitely be linked with depression and anxiety and psychi psychiatric disorders and some cognitive dysfunction even. So COPD is definitely uh, associated with a lot of other comorbidities. Most important risk factor for COPD is cigarette smoking. 
And so, and you know, secondhand smoke and some biomass fuel inhalation may also play a role, but cigarette smoke is by far the biggest risk factor. And the more you smoke, the more likely you are to have worse or more severe COPD. We don't know exactly how many cigarettes it takes or how long you smoke. You know, those exact numbers are hard to calculate because everybody's body is a little bit different, but any smoking is gonna be bad for you and increase your risk of COPD. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to not smoke. So as we age, our lung function is going to get worse. It's just a normal part of aging. Every, it's gonna to happen to us all, <laughs> nothing we can do about it. But if you smoke, the rate at which your lung function goes down, it's faster. So you deteriorate faster. If you stop smoking, you can slow down your rate of decline to match that of a normal healthy person. So your lungs may always be a little bit worse than a healthy person, but they will not get as bad as if you kept smoking. So there's definitely still a benefit to stopping cigarette smoking, no matter what. It's usually based off of symptoms. And then there's also a special test that we can do called pulmonary function test. It's a measure of your lung function. You basically sit in a box and you breathe into a tube and we measure how well your lungs are at taking in air and exhaling air. Um, and if you don't exhale as much air as you inhale, and we can't reverse that with inhalers, that way, you know, trying to figure out if this is COPD versus asthma. And if, so if you can't exhale all of that air, then you probably have COPD. Usually imaging studies like chest x-rays or CT scans aren't totally necessary, but if you have a CT scan that shows emphysema, which is another potential complication of COPD, it's damaged lung tissue that causes holes in the lung actually. If you have emphysema, then you definitely have COPD. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep driving this home. Stop smoking. <laughs> the first thing you can do is to stop smoking. Um, and then we use a combination of inhalers to help keep the airways as open as possible, relax them and, and help you exhale all of that air. Uh, pulmonary rehab is also really, really helpful. It's a special exercise program um, for people with lung diseases. And at pulmonary rehab, you learn how to be more efficient with your breathing so that you don't feel as short of breath. And then you also strengthen important large muscle groups so that they're more efficient at using the oxygen that you give them. The so pulmonary rehab inhalers, smoking cessation are, are kind of the key ones. In more severe disease, sometimes people need supplemental oxygen. So, you know, you sometimes see people with like oxygen tubing around their noses. And there are a lot of different reasons people can need oxygen, but having COPD and emphysema is one of them. And so sometimes you need some extra oxygen, especially when you're up and moving around. Um, and then sometimes if the COPD is really bad and you're holding on to way too much air, at nighttime, you can wear um, a mask to help you sleep. It's the same type that's used for sleep apnea, but it's to help exhale that air while you're sleeping so it doesn't build up overnight. Unfortunately, once you have COPD, because it's not reversible, you can't cure it. Once the damage has been done, it's there. But COPD is very treatable. Um, and like I said, if you stop smoking and do all these interventions, you can slow down your rate of decline to match that of a normal person. Everybody's a little bit different, so it's hard to put an exact number that if you smoke, you're going to get COPD. If you smoke, you're going to get lung cancer, because we all know that one story of someone, you know, there's some auntie or uncle or grandma or grandpa who smoked their whole life, lived until they're 100 and never got cancer or COPD. And that's just good genetics, um, that it's hard for us to calculate who's going to get it and who's not. But for sure, smoking is the biggest risk factor, biggest risk factor for both COPD and lung cancer development. And so, you know, just because you have COPD, it doesn't mean you're gonna get lung cancer or vice versa, but definitely smoking and COPD will increase your risk of lung cancer.
aside from smoking cessation, which is number <laughs> one, stop smoking. Um, and then I would say just stay as active as possible, you know, keeping your heart healthy, keeping your muscles healthy, kind of the idea behind pulmonary rehab is keeping your muscles as efficient as possible so that they're using the oxygen that you're getting um, as smartly as possible. So staying cardiovascularly fit and then eating a well-balanced diet. There hasn't been any evidence to suggest that eating a particular food or avoiding any particular food group is beneficial for COPD. Um, so just the general blanket recommendation of eating a well-balanced diet.